I got three words for you guys. Chaz it up. Hey guys, it's Tom Box, and welcome to MSC.TV. Now, today we are looking into a monster that's been working out at the gym for 17 years. And what does 17 years of retraining do to a monster? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. This is the Arm Dragon series, and while they were hitting the gym, they also gained a little bit of a sponsorship from the Chaz Princeton Group, from what I can hear. And they are ready for their 2021 relaunch in Blazing Vortex. And finally, let's take a look at some of these results. And I've got all the answers for you guys today. What makes this archetype impactful? How do you maximize their new effects? What are the rarities of some of these cards? As well as the potential direction for this particular archetype. Being a dragon base, also Chaz based, you can go full Chaz or you can support your generic dragon based strategies such as Dragon Links. Now you guys have waited long enough and the best way to talk about how impactful they are is to do the card for card. Then it'll make a lot more sense as we go through them. We'll start by breaking down the archetype mechanic of Arm Dragon Thunders. The effect lines can be divided into two parts. Anything that's Arm Dragon level 10 related, they're considered as boss monsters and they're kind of the end goal of what you want to summon onto the field, either to push an aggressive play or control the field. But for Arm Dragon's Thunders levels 3, 5, and 7, this is the core engine of the deck and this is where the playstyle is very different. This is a new summoning mechanic for level type monsters and this is how it kind of works out. So first of all, it's an Arm Dragon monster because they changed their name back into Arm Dragon's level 3, 5, and 7 to kind of fulfill the summoning requirements of Arm Dragon level 7 and 10, which have stricter summoning re requirements. So that's kind of nice. They kind of played nice with the old stuff. They remember who they are. They know that the Thunder part is just a branding for Chaz Princeton, but let's move on to the next two effects, which are the key changes of the archetype. Now, originally, Arm Dragons level 3, 5, and 7, the original kind, they were aggressive. They destroyed monsters on the field. They kind of have a Lightning Vortex-esque effect, but these ones do not have any sort of destructive capability. All of that has been moved into the level 10 line. So, what do they do? Well, they have two effects. One is to fuel the effects of any dragons. So if you pay cost with these monsters by sending them to the graveyard, they will have a trigger effect to replenish resources. Or if they're on the field, you can send a dragon from your hand to the graveyard and they will race to level up or maintain the same level. Or I think you can even level down because it's not just one way anymore. You can choose the level that you need based off of going up or down. So there's that. All right. So those are the kinds of effects. As for the tens, they're aggressors. We'll get into them in a second. Arm Dragon's Thunder level three. The level up effect kind of across the board goes like this. You can send a dragon from your hand to the graveyard and then you can send the monster on the field to the graveyard as part of the effect. And then you'll summon a level five or below Arm Dragon monster. And it seems like you can actually not just level up, but you can actually go back down or maintain the same tier. And each of the monsters, level three, five, and seven, are able to go in all of those directions and always be able to summon out the tier above. That aside, let's go into the key effects here. If you send level three to the graveyard as a cost, you get to draw one card. Not amazing, but it can help you mitigate some of the costs, which is all right. Likely you're gonna level up first before you actually get there. But if you go for the level fives and sevens as cost, this is where it starts to reward you for that. And it kind of changes up the mechanic a bit where, you know, having a too many high level monsters before is awful. They consider them as bricks. You know, you can't play your hand. Everything is kind of stuck. But th instead, this time if you send them for cost, you reward it for better and better effects. Level five, if you send it to the graveyard as a cost, you get to add a level five or higher wind dragon. You can add the seven arm dragon thunder, or you can add Tempest. I think there's other wind dragons you can also consider as a part of the option, but being able to add Tempest basically means you're able to search for any dragon because don't forget the entire arm dragon line, they are wind based. So if you send a wind monster with Tempest, you can search for any dragon in your, in your entire deck. You know, white dragon, wyvern burster, black dragon, collapse serpent, red eyes, darkness, metal, black metal dragon. I don't know any of the dragons that you really need. And there are ways to special summon out an armed dragon out of the deck for free, but that's gonna go into the spell and trap line territory. Next, we have level seven. Of course, you can summon anything that's level 10 or below for the armed dragon if you wanna level it up. But keep in mind, like, Arm Dragon level 10 still has a summoning restriction where it has to be summoned by its own effect, and Arm Dragon level 10 white also has a summoning restriction, which means the only monster, if you're gonna go into 10, is going to be Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. But what about the sending to the graveyard effect? This is amazing because you get to add any Arm Dragon card, including spells and traps, any of the monsters that share it, except for Hardened Arm Dragon, because that is not considered as an Arm Dragon card. So just keep that in mind, guys. But here's the thing, being able to add any Arm Dragon card, the spell line is amazing in this set. Let me just tell you that. You can, anything that's emergency teleport-esque, 
is really, really good. It's a free summon. I don't think, and we, anyone that plays Dragon Link knows that free summons out of the deck always lead to more ways to extend. And uh, I, I can't really complain when it comes to a free monster. Now, let's go into the level 10s before we jump into the spells and traps. For Arm Dragon level 10, there's three Arm Dragon level 10. We have the original, we have Arm Dragon Thunder level 10, and we have Arm Dragon level 10 white. Manjo Mei Fact. The effect of Arm Dragon Thunder level 10 is actually based off of the original Chaz It Up chant, not the English one, the Japanese one. Chaz's name was Manjo Mei Jun, and when he got to the top of North Academy, they chanted Ichi, Ju, Hyaku, Sen, Manjo Mei Sanda, and for those of you who know Japanese, I am calling out numbers of 1, 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. So there's no better monster that actually embodies Chaz's chant than Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. So yeah, there's that. Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. Maybe the first secret rare that you may pay attention to here. Uh, if this card is special summoned by the effect of an Arm Dragon monster, it gains the following effect based off of the attack. In other words, if you put it to zero attack, it will lose all of its effects. Okay, that aside, one, two, three, and four effects are from one attack, 10 attack, 100 attack, and 1000 attack. Name becomes Arm Dragon level 10, so control cannot be switched, cannot be destroyed by battle, and the 1000 effect is one that I really care about, uh, which is once per turn, during your opponent's turn, a quick effect, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard and then target one other card on the field, destroy it, and if you do gain 1000 attack, that's pretty impressive for almost like a masterpiece level monster but it cannot be destroyed by battle but in terms of protecting it from card effects you can do that too with the spells and traps and those spells and traps have recycling resource type capabilities which is why you're likely going to see them on the field with this card making it very protected we'll get into that in a second and if you get a 10,000 attack it basically tells you you win the game because you get to nuke the entire board that's right, you get to nuke the entire board to attack for 10,000 damage. That's ridiculous, but that's one way of doing it. And there's also one more monster to talk about for the level 10 series, which is the Armed Dragon level 10 White. This is basically when he was part of the Society of Light. I guess this tells his entire story more or less. When he was power hungry for the original, then he became Society of Light, and finally he gets to become a pro duelist. But this one is actually rather easy to summon and has a non-targeting destruction effect while also protecting you from effect damage. And if you play White Veil, you can add a White Veil from your deck to your hand when you summon out this card. And summoning condition is rather easy. It's banishing Arm Dragon monsters from your field or graveyard whose level equals to 10. So two fives, a three and a seven or just a 10. So fairly easy uh, to put out such a big monster. Now what makes it really competitive for me uh, for this particular archetype and why I think it has long-term impact, whether it be immediate or even for future use, is because of Arm Dragon Flash. Like, we already know that Quick Launch is a very powerful card. It's a free summon, it's not once per turn, it blows up the monster. This is essentially kind of in that same category. It's an emergency teleport for another dragon type monster. And this time we're going for Arm Dragon. So this is Arm Dragon Flash, potentially again, secret rare, just pay attention to the text color guys. And you can special summon out one level three Arm Dragon from your deck in defense position. Although it is once per turn, this card is a little bit more accessible because it's searchable from Arm Dragon Thunder level seven. If you send it to the graver for cost, search whatever, use your safer, whatever it may be that you send for cost, this can provide you with an additional dragon body and any dragon link player will tell you all dragon link player really needs are level four lower dragons summoned onto the field we can even be a vanilla for all we care and we would still appreciate it so yeah being able to get another free dragon not bad at all and definitely has impact for the future now if you don't play with christian halki fibrax if you don't play with link cross of course that one's banned and if you don't play with union carrier you can try out arm dragon blitz because it generates another dragon body for free from your deck but you have to target an arm dragon you control and then you take one with the same name from your deck or graveyard either add it to your hand or special summon it it cannot attack directly but the restriction for this particular card is that you cannot summon a special summon monster the turn you activate this card except for dragon so that's for the entire turn another, again another free summon and then the, here's the protection you have arm dragon lightning now if i'm arm dragon you control will be destroyed this is a continuous spell you can send this card to the graveyard instead so this provides you with a protection like i said earlier before you can protect your arm dragon thunder level 10 from battle with its own effect and this one can protect it from card effects making it very sticky uh so that it's a very solid wall against your opponent 
Now, it can also boost the attack, but I think the other effect I care a bit more is that you can add one arm dragon monster with equal to or lower level than it from your graveyard to your hand. So yeah, you can just target one of your guys, add it back, add your seven back. That works really well. And finally, we have the one trap, Arm Dragon Thunderbolt. This one is kind of interesting because it's not really an aggressive one. This is a much more defensive play. Like, let me just appreciate the card art here. It looks really, really good. It's charging up in a Thunderball, ready to kind of fire it out. Now, target one Arm Dragon you control, it gains 1,000 attack for each Arm Dragon in your graveyard with equal to or lower level than it with different names from each other. I think you can gain a maximum of 4,000 if I'm correct. Or actually, no, I think you can actually gain a little bit more. I think your maximum gain is about 5,000 or so. But also for the rest of the turn, your opponent takes no battle damage from its attack. So in other words, this is a much more defensive card than offensive. You can banish this card from your grave and then target an arm dragon spell in your grave add it to your hand. So yeah, it's a once per turn, once per turn. So you can only use one effect once per turn, and that's kind of how it goes. But that's kind of the rundown of the entire card lineup. So there's two lines you can really play with this. You can go for the challenging Chaz way, which is to match this with the Ojamas, because Ojamas have Ojam match to summon out your arm dragons for free, and net pluses with the Ojamas. But ultimately, you can end with the crazy boss monster of arm dragon catapult cannon, one of the most difficult to summon monsters out. However, if you're able to summon it, you will oppress your opponent from even being able to play Yu-Gi-Oh at all. But you'll have to use the Ojama engine to get there. That's probably the most difficult part. But since the condition to summon out that monster was kind of slashed in half because the arm dragon uh, level seven is no longer a difficult condition, the only hard part is to summon out the two union monsters of VW, I guess, Tiger Catapult. And you also need the, the Dragon Cannon, XYZ Dragon Cannon to make the VW XYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon. And finally you have to banish the two from the graveyard. So that part is a little bit more difficult. A little, I mean like a lot more difficult. But if you get there, you should be able to win because your opponent can't activate Yu-Gi-Oh cards based off of the things that have been banished. And it has the effect to banish everything on the field that is face up on your opponent's side and in their graveyard, making comboing impossible. That aside, if we go into the more competitive line, you have a lot of card effects in Dragon Link that has costs, such as Star Leech Safer, that sends any number of dragon monsters from your hand or field to the graveyard to add dragon monsters. This helps you replenish that cost, it mitigates some of the minuses that you would get normally, and it just gives you the additional options that you don't have to go with the black and the white dragon, although that is typically a really good option. But if you are able to also use Tempest, the Dragon Ruler of Storms, this lets you add any dragons from your deck to your hand. And normally you would be decreasing your hand size by one, but with Tempest and any of the level three, five or seven, that cost is completely mitigated. You're switching Tempest for any dragon, including the black and the white, uh, or maybe even Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Whatever it may be, it's one of the most flexible cards in your deck right now. And you can also use Gold Sark to send the Tempest to be banished just so that you can add the Arm Dragon Thunder level seven, just so you can use that to pay costs for additional strategies. It's just like layer upon layer of strategy when it comes to Dragon Link. I know that we don't have the Dragon Buster lock anymore, but there's just so much when it comes to playing dragons in Yu-Gi-Oh, which is why getting free summons and getting like another resource engine, it just makes things a lot more flexible. It's kind of like when Dragon Maids came out with Hospitality, that just became another one card combo for them. This is likely looking very similar in terms of the potential there. And that is all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed the rundown of the Arm Dragon Thunders, learn a little bit about the rarity and how you actually play this particular deck, well, we'll hit the thumbs up button. If you guys wanna see more stuff from msd.tv, hit the subscribe, ding the notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next one.